What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today I have another V Rising video for you. So this one is all about farming end game materials. So as you get deeper into V Rising, the materials you need to upgrade your uh, gear, to repair it, to craft new weapons, really to do anything, you're going to need more and more rare materials. Now, the rarer the materials, the harder they are to get, just like in any other game, right? So what I put together is a quick video with the three best locations to go farm a lot of these top tier materials. Things like Scourge Stones, Grave Dust, Ghost Yarn, Pristine Hide and Pristine Leather, Fish Oil, uh, Ingots, all of these things that you need in order to keep progressing in V Rising. So there's three main spots and let's go ahead and break these down. So of the three spots, we'll go from left to right. So over here in Silverlight Hills, you have something called the Bright Haven Docks. Now the Bright Haven Docks is fantastic for a lot of different things. You can see there's fresh fish, fish oil, leather, reinforced plank, but here there's also a ton of other stuff. Now, just like any other dock in real life, there's a ton of containers, there's a ton of breakable objects, and all of these contain precious loot that you actually need in order to upgrade your character or craft new things. So here it does say, you know, fish, fish oil, leather, reinforced plank, but you're also going to get iron and copper ingots. You're going to get schematics. You're going to get um, different crystals. You're going to get gems. You're going to get all of these things that you need. Really, this is kind of just a big grab bag or a hodgepodge of stuff. And it's all useful stuff. It's all things you actually can take advantage of. You're not going to throw anything on the ground. But going out here to the Bright Haven docks is probably one of the most dangerous areas right now, if you're, especially if you're in the 60s, because there's high 60s, low 70 enemies here that are patrolling. Um, however, if you're mid 60s, you should be okay. If you're under 60, I would say you're probably going to have a hard time. But getting in here isn't so bad. So first off, you can go and you can teleport to this Vampire Way gate here to the north. Make sure to bring your horse with you. After that, you just want to kind of come down this road, watch out for all of the um, um, gunners and all that stuff. So once you get to this fork, right over here, it's kind of hard to see because of these highlighted areas. So right where this X is, there's a hole in the wall. And you can kind of see this path right here. You can follow this hole in the wall and you can skirt all the way around this little uh, ridge here. And that'll end you up into the docks right next to some stables. And there's also a little house right here if you need to take a break. Um, but watch out because there is a priest that patrols here. There is a 72 paladin that comes from this direction. And the paladin will walk all the way down to the docks over here. Now, I haven't seen him come south of here. Really, he just goes from this point all the way up to this point. And the priest walks from this point all the way down here south. So really, you just need to watch out for those two enemies. But beyond that, break everything that you can find from this X to this X, all of this, because it's going to be super useful and very important. So beyond that, if you really don't want to go out and try to, you know, roll the dice in Silverlight Foothills or Silverlight Hills, you can also come up here to the Cursed Forest. Now, one of the best farming spots that a friend told me about is the ancient village right here. So I went and I checked it out. He's like, yo, this is like one of the best farming spots. I swear it's awesome. And so I went and checked it out and lo and behold, he's absolutely right. So the ancient village is perfect for scourge stones, for um, ghost yarn, spectral dust, grave dust, bones, silver. And this is one I actually went out and I wanted to see exactly how much I could get um, every single time I ran it. And it was pretty interesting. So it took seven minutes to clear the entire uh, area here. Now you can see there's a bunch of different houses. Um, make sure to go in and clear out each house. There's typically two to three containers in each house and these have loot as well. So make sure to loot those. Um, but I was able to clear it in seven minutes. And each time I ran, I got 13 grave dust, four scourge stones, three to four ghost yarn, three spectral dust, 60 to 70 ghost mushrooms, 130 to 150 ghost crystals, and 10 silver. Now, the scourge stones are gonna come from banshees that are patrolling this area. So there's a couple banshees. Those are almost always going to drop scourge stones, but then there's also like undead bishops. There's a couple skeleton mages. Um, those typically always drop grave dust and they have a chance at dropping a scourge stone. But for the most part, make sure you loot those containers and make sure you take care of those banshees. 
Also, don't um, just kind of keep your gaze here to these uh, houses and this kind of central location here. Also make sure to go along behind these houses because there's two enemies back here as well as golden chests. So typically the golden chest I see spawns either up here or spawns in this house down here. Those are the two places I've seen it. Um, but looting this one is particularly nice because again, it has extra scourge stones and grave dust as well as some flawless gems if you need those. Now from here, um, this takes five minutes to respawn. So if you clear it at one o'clock, then five minutes later at 105, the enemies will begin respawning in the order that they were killed. So if you go in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion, then you can start going in that same motion to clear everything back out. But this is one of the best farms that I've seen. Now, what I highly recommend is while this one is on cooldown, make your way north. Go up this little path here, all the way up here to the very top in this little area, up here by the Swamp of Greed. So this is going to have a bunch of different toads, um, worms, like the worm terror, um, some like mosquito looking things, as well as a bunch of like frogs, like I mentioned. All of these are going to drop scales. Now, the cool thing is because these are going to drop so many scales, I mean, you can go and I think I was here and I killed like six or seven things um, while I was waiting and I ended up with like three or 400 scales. It's just, they drop so many. And if you get that worm terror to show up, he drops 60. And if you get the kind of, it's a big toad um, that shows up, he drops a hundred. If you can get some of the night terrors or whatever they're called, the night stalkers, um, they're like the invisible werewolves that patrol this road here. Um, if you can kill them, they drop a hundred scales typically as well. So really what you wanna do is just bounce from this ancient village up here to this swampy area and just clear for scales, come back down here, clear this for all of your undead related um, items, and then go back up here and clear for scales and just bounce back and forth. But the thing is, you're gonna fill up your inventory super quick doing this. So you need to be able to um, have a an, an out, right? Bring a horse with you. Um, that way you can head back to your castle. If you wanna set up a castle up here, that's a great uh, method as well. Or um, like my friend, so we have a cave passage right here where this X is. And this cave passage actually leads you all the way back down to this. So he has his building set up right here, his castle. So he's in a perfect spot. He just takes this cave, runs up, drops everything off, and then teleports back up here to this, clears everything, takes the cave back. He has a wonderful loop. I'm not so lucky. I'm down here. Um, you know, I thought I was being smart in like a centralized location to hit both Silverlight and up here, but I guess I chose wrong. So guys, that wraps everything up. These are three top end game farming areas. Again, we have the swamp for a bunch of scales. We have the ancient village for grave dust, scourge stone, uh, ghost yarn, spectral dust, silver, ghost crystal, ghost mushrooms, um, as well as schematics and other things. And then we have the Bright Haven docks for our fish, fish oil, fish skeletons, leather, reinforced plank. So all of these things are wonderful places to go check out. I hope this video has helped give you guys a little bit of an idea of where to spend most of your time once you push into early 60s. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.